gosh. And that, that is such a good feeling. And that's what I wish for everybody. Me too. Me too. I used to, um, when I came out of my relationship, yeah, um, yeah. when I was doing online dating, you know, one of the things that I put on my description is, you know, when it says, how, how would your friends describe you? And I put down what Rob used to say, you're just irritatingly optimistic. And I'm like, okay, that's going to be my theme from now on. So, <laughs> uh, and I just would lead with that. Like, that's my story. Take it or leave it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh oh. I don't know about the irritation part, but yes, if you call it irritatingly optimistic, that explains why we're not in a union right now. <laughs> and so, like, you know, I used to have people that that used to be like, you know, just like in that same kind of thing, like, here come her happy ass. <laughs> think to myself like yay <laughs> yes um yeah kitty once told me she was like you know she says i used to not like you and she says but after years of knowing you she was like it's just the way you are it's not like it's not like it's something you turn on and turn off for the situation or for people she was like that's not you are yeah yeah yes. and and when i'm not there i am swimming like a a champion Olympic swimmer to get there. I'm like, okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Or I'll say, you know, because person who probably gets a gets that part of me that's not there is either, you know, the person that I'm in connection with, which is nobody right now, or my girlfriend Michelle. And in a minute I'll say, okay, that's enough. I'm done. I'm done with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with that. I'm done with that. I'm done. But I gotta gotta shift my energy. Okay. <laughs> done with that if she doesn't say shift she's not she doesn't say shift I'm always saying okay let's talk about something else but I will quickly be like okay all right all right I'm losing I'm losing momentum let me get back let me get back get back here let me get back here so so now the guy that I was talking about this said that you know when you're healthy by how you wake up like he said if you're excited about your day, about life, about what you got going on. He was like, that's a healthy person. He says, when you open your eyes and you're dreading getting up, mm. dreading what the day brings, he was like, then that is a person who needs, who has work to do. Yes. So he said <laughs> that, he says that, he says, I always like to say that illness starts with an I. Hmm. And he, Ooh, oh, of course I don't have paper. Wait, 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 I didn't finish. Okay. <laughs> I, wellness starts with we. Oh. It's a W-E. So he said, when you just focus in the end on yourself and your own interests, he was like, you setting yourself up. <laughs> don't you love that? I love it. And, and I was, as I was thinking about, you know, okay, so I don't want to change my company to, you know, it's Journey Home Ministries. And I was sharing with some other people, like, what about Journey Home Wellness Center? And so now it's like, oh, okay. Thank you, Sandra. Wellness <laughs> it is. Like, thank you. Starts with the we. That's good. <laughs> there you are wellness center <laughs> that's so good I that's my life it. though it's so serendipitous i just love this journey right now yes 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 so um yeah i just you know yesterday um i had a good conversation with um you know I, I, I came in here with my little stuff. I was actually, uh, um, you thought you were going to get here early. Yes. <laughs> you know, my, um, my, I got a couple of nails that just keep shedding, I'll say. And, um, I was like, okay. Cause I used to, you know how I was, I always had on my, uh, oh yeah. Your green on. polishes. Yes, yes, yes. And so 
every once in a while, I don't know what it is that changes, but sometimes they grow and they're, they're just fine. And then sometimes they just start splitting. And so I was like, let me put some stuff back on my nails. So anyway, uh, just, just, uh, just womanly, woman, all right. wonderful, wonderful womanly stuff. And I, you know, this, this idea of, of I am woman, I love, love, love. Ugh. So I just, you know, I'm just, life is good. Life it is. is. Yes. It is. It is. It is. It's. So. <laughs> Wait. So. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh. So. Oh, blessings, blessings, blessings to you, dear one. So, um, yeah. Uh, what else did I want to um, tell you about before um, we dive back into this work? Um, um, I just have been whew, in this, this, um, Hmm, this thing of just kind of re-looking at how I've looked at things in the past based on what we are learning here. And um, this idea of how, you know, because I, I, I dove into that book by Bruce Lipton about cellular structure and the cells and how cells work. And one of the things that he talks about um, over and over again is about the structure of a cell. And mm -hmm. he says that a cell is encapsulated in a membrane. Mm -hmm. And he says, and that membrane acts just like a brain, like allowing in or repelling what does not belong or what doesn't add. So he was like, these things are, you know, they're, they're kind of fluid in nature and they have an intelligence on a singular level. Mm -hmm. And so when they operate as a entity like your digestive center or your heart, he says they're all acting in concert to do the functions that they are to do, just like each and every one of us does. So how we talk about what happens on a microscopic level is also what happens on a macro level. Good morning, Erica. Good morning, hey. Erica. Long time no see. Where have you been? <laughs> Bless your heart. So um, I started to call her the other day because I was like, where is that woman at? She just, <laughs> just, sometimes she comes in with her spiciness and then she goes away for a couple of weeks and I don't know what that's about. Be on the, in the cut watching. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, the wolves have to go into their den every now and then. We do, we do, we do, we Ooh. do. And it's all good. Yes, I, I am mad. I am mad. So, so she, you know, he was talking about how our cells um, all operate in a particular type of way because they have an intelligence all their own. And how um, that membrane is kind of like the gatekeeper on what happens. And then he said that if you look at and you think about our body as a collection of cells and each of them have their own, like, you know, like they're assigned to a particular part of our body. So I have cells that make up my eyes or that make up my nose and my olfactory systems or my taste and my tongue and all of this stuff. They are doing what it is that they do. And then he says, and if you look at a human and a human's body, the membrane is called skin. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, we are these walking community of cells 
that are all assigned to do a particular process and they come together as Sandra or they come together as Stephanie or they come together as Erica. They come together as the beings that we are in a community to do a, a, the thing that they are to do. And then he says, and, and a lot of times we don't look at it like from that perspective. We're looking at it like, you know, like we just got these bodies and we kind of lumber about in them without really honoring that we are a collective that is showing up as who we are. Yeah. The and machine me, that is me. Yes, it's so juicy and wonderful. Um, she said, oh, she says she's dipped in and out, but don't always instigate. I love that. <laughs> you know what i'm gonna stop because i see already today i'm feeling some kind of a funny energy um the the funny energy of just um womanness <sighs> just breathing into that it's just just good 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 <laughs> so i'm gonna stop because <laughs> it is so good but but, you know, it's um, when I was telling you about, um, I guess it was last week when I was talking about the Course in Miracles and how the Course in Miracles is falling on me differently as I look at myself as a collective, as a community. Um, it, everything sort of sounds different through that lens. Mm -hmm even if as I hold my hand on my heart here and I feel the vibrations that need to come together for my voice to come up through my larynx and out of my mouth, for my tongue to get in sync with all of this stuff as I view it as a collective, all of this participating to show up as me, it is so much juicier than it was before. Yeah. I, and that's all of life. Yes. Yes. And if we think about that, 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 that life seemed to start as a amoeba, like a single cell, and then it just multiplies and multiplies and multiplies. And then here's but the even in that single thing. cell is everything. Yes. Yes. Everything. Yes. And then um, the, I, was it the same guy who was talking about the I and illness and the we and wellness? I, I think it was the same guy that said, stick your finger in your navel. And he says, and think of it as the center of the universe. Oh, huh. <laughs> let me breathe <laughs> into good. that. Breathe into that. It's like, oh. <laughs> So yes, I'm feeling it today. I mean, I went to sleep with my finger in my navel, my thumb in my navel last night, thinking to myself like, ooh, that juicy. <laughs> that was just amazing. Amazing. Good. Center of the universe. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do that the next time I do a little white light meditation. You know how you take the white light down to the center and, and connect it to the core of the earth and then bring it back up. I'm going to try the navel thing while I'm doing that. White yeah, light. I haven't done that. I, you you have, know, when oh. I do a, a white light meditation, I see a white light that comes over and it lightens up each of my sock chakras. Are you talking about uh, something? Like no, it's just a white light that comes through the center going all the way down through your body into the core of the earth and then oh, hold the vibration of the warmth of the center of the earth and pull that liquid, whatever you imagine it to be. It's an orange, yummy liquid gel for me that comes up and uh -huh. back out. And so I'm going to try that with my finger in my navel next time and see what happens. Okay. You know, um, I just finished reading this book, Beast of Prey. That's a nonfiction book by uh, this young black girl, Ariana, um, I forget what her last name is, but um, part of that book was her powers came from the earth. It was that, um, what does she call it? Um, 
it, it was, uh, I forget what she called it. The, um, I have to think about it for a minute, but, but all of this stuff, it was almost as if everything was a grounding exercise and let's mm. just ground into the earth and then pull up the force of the earth that either comes, mm. you know, easily and readily when your heart is in the right place or mm -hmm. it will be something that, you know, that, that she couldn't quite grasp because, she didn't have her head right. So it was, it's, you know, some of the, some of the time when I read these um, supposedly fictional books, uh, <laughs> I'm really just awed because I think that the idea that they are fiction sort of sci-fi gives people license to imagine something. Uh, wow. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, that, normally people would be like yeah like that's fantastical but at other times I'm sitting up there thinking like mm, somebody somebody whispered this in her ear you know mm -hmm. somebody has said this to her so it's it's good um and let me before I get off of the book at one point they were in this thing called in this forest and the forest people used to not go into because they were scared of it it had all of these you know when you go in it came alive and so they got to the center of the forest and they saw this big tree they called it the center of the forest because this tree seemed to be the oldest tree there and it was beautiful and it was huge and everything on it looked so wonderful so they sat down at the base of this tree and they they grabbed a couple of pieces of pieces of fruit off of there and they sat down at the tree and they started to eat the fruit and you know she pulled out this little knife and she cut up some fruit and she started eating it but he didn't and it was so interesting because she ate a couple of pieces small pieces um they as they were describing it because they were talking at the same time and then after about five or ten minutes she started to get really sick and um and when they looked up at the tree to where the tree and the fruit was so beautiful and red before, all of a sudden it had turned black and ashen. So when they were looking for somebody to help her, because she was like, she was dying, they were looking for somebody to help her. They found some people who lived in the forest and the forest, they were like, oh, you can only eat that fruit if you ask the tree for permission. If Come you, on now, that is good. That will kill you. Yes. I was like, oh, <laughs> <hey."> <laughs> girl, I was oh, like, I love oh, it. I that's love good. It. I loved it. You got to hear mm. She ate without permission, without asking, can I eat from you? Kind of just chills. <laughs> that's really good. So yes, yeah. that's why I say that sometimes these doggone books that people write talking about their fiction, it's just like, ooh, they just inform. Symbolic. The symbolism yeah. is powerful. Yes, yes. Yeah. The splendor is what that what was mm. called. They were trying to grasp mm. the splendor of the earth. Yes, it's the splendor. Wow, that's good. Mm -hmm. So um, we are picking up. Huh? Yeah. I just said I love that. It's a good book. It was, uh, you know, I didn't think because um, it was it was longer than most books that I would give that much attention to. Um, <laughs> but it was good. It was good. So I'm excited about that. So, um, so, you know, we've been talking about the epigenetics and sort of about the um, chemistry behind epigenetics, the science behind um, cells and all of that stuff. We've been sort of delving down into that for the last couple of days. Yesterday, we talked about... Um, we, we talked about the animal stuff that they did with animals to kind of try to understand and why they were using mice and rats to do this because a generation for them is 
um weeks. yeah is is weeks as opposed to um years like it would take for us to do it on on our on humans and and of course how 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 terrible would that be if we just were trying to experiment on little kids by taking them from their mother it's terrible in well it happens life. they started off that way like there's a there is a research uh atwood research it did the same experiment that's how we came up with attachment modalities from that i mean i don't know if it came from the mice one either but i studied the at uh, atwood uh research that showed attachment is similar to this, except for the electric shock treatment. But it was the same treatment as taking the child away from the mom without any explanation. Child comes back with the child's responses, how the child responds from, from that. It was done on humans. You know what? And and again, look how 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 art imitates life, right? So a lot of times these mutant shows about people who come back with all of these other powers were people who were stripped from their parents for whatever reason. Um, yes, like their, Dorothy. Grown up, yeah, in, in some kind of institution or whatever, whatever the setting is, in order to like just look at how those things yeah. morph them into different characters or into different beings so yeah this great is, observation that's good mm -hmm. yeah this is this is our i think that life. the one of the greatest impacts on this part that we talked about yesterday for me was the fact of the far-reaching consequence mm -hmm. oh generations great grand pups like yep. wow yeah um, so, but there was something I wanted to backtrack on because, uh -huh. um, you know, I went back over this yesterday and for some reason, I think we skipped most of um, page 36. 36. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there was mm -hmm. a couple of things that I, I thought that I wanted to bring out on, but in particular in this last, um, the last chapter in, uh, of that section, it says here, um, they were talking about Mans Mansu, however they say her name, her colleagues were able to show that trauma symptoms could be reversed in the mice after they lived in a positive, low stress environment as adults. And so while, while we talk about this idea of, of this impacting three generations, all is not lost. I mean, we are we we are talking here, and of course, Stephanie is here because this is what we what people That's try to do. Mm -hmm. Figure out what it is that is at the root cause of this, and then be able to fix it. Mm -hmm. so, so we can't change what is past. If you if your parents weren't there, or if you're if if you got beat as a child, we can't pay, change what has happened. But we what we can do is be intentional about what is and the direction that we're going, and being intentional about the lives that we touch from here on out. So and I just be intentional about what we think about it. Yeah, that's the catalyst that the, how what and how I think and perceive it is what changes the subconscious, because mm -hmm. as long as I think victim, I'm going to use that just blanket, then we get these victim lives, we get all these reactivities, we get all these PTSDs and landmines that we're constantly people are constantly experiencing with us, if we haven't found a way to uh to fix it, to to heal from it, to to soothe ourselves from the experiences, to get calm, regulated calmly in me. Right, and the narrative that we create around all of this is so important. So, like, um, I love one of the things um, I'll talk about. Um, we got this judge here in town, town Michael. What is Mike's name? Um, I got his letter sitting here on my desk somewhere. Anyway, I had him on my radio show years ago. And so we came on the radio to show to talk about being raised by a single mother. 
and all of the traumatic stuff that happened to him throughout his life. As a matter of fact, there was a, a guy who did the same thing as a part of a TED talk. He talked about the trauma of his life, being raised by a drug addicted mother. And he said that one day he walked in the house and his mother's um, boyfriend, lover, whatever he was, was laying in the middle of the floor dead. And he said, and as a child, he says, I walked in, he says, I saw him laying there. Apparently he OD'd and he says, and I just stepped over the body and went into the kitchen so I could get some cereal. And he talked about what that was like as a child. And then he says, but look at me now. He did one of those numbers, like, look at me now. So it is, we can sit there and we can talk about how terrible things have been in the past, but what do we do with them in, a pre in the present? How do we allow that to then transform our lives? Because I mean, and, and I think that that's one of the reasons why I talk about some of the stuff that has happened to me, Stephanie has shared some of the stuff that has happened to her, is because while while those things have happened and it may seem like they are terrible, if we can, if we stay in the victim mode, we are powerless over it. Mm -hmm. But if you get into the mode of thinking that all this has come together for my good, mm -hmm. right? Not something that I need to hide away and worry about whether or not you judging it or not, right? Because if you want to judge it, that says more about you than it does about me. <laughs> I mean, that, that's one of, the, one of the things that we have to think. So it's, it's not getting caught up in the judgments about it, but how does this work into a larger plan? Mm -hmm. Oh, this, this, um, this guy was talking about time and he says, usually what people do is, is we look at time in a linear fashion you know, one thing right after another, after this, after that. He says, but if we could get it in this thing where we see it as a, a circular kind of thing. Because um, it is. Yeah, if we look at it, you know, differently than what, we, than what we've been trained to see it, we see that all of this stuff is working together. All of it's working together, no matter what it is, circular even healing is circular you get a, you get an aha you get a healing area in life for whatever reason in this magical essence sends you back around to the same similar circumstances but the new you for who you are experiences that same experience so very different yeah. and, and that's the healing that's that is the healing. It's not like, oh, I'm going to go here and then here and then here. It's like, oh, I'm healed. And then life just invites the same experience and you just recognize, oh, wow. Like this woman didn't respond to life the way that woman did. And it's the same me, but it's a different me. Yeah, yeah, it's so juicy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so... I, I think that, and uh, let's see, and speculate the behavioral effects of a traumatic event can express for three generations. We just talked about that. Yeah. Um, oh, and then, and then the last part of that line was, but perhaps not beyond that. That was interesting to me. Where was that? Where I'm talking about in that, um, the first full paragraph, the researchers also, it's that very last line in there. Micro RNA were not detected leading researchers to speculate. On page 36? Yeah, page 36. Oh, ah, okay. Mm -hmm. the middle of the, okay, so I just thought that was interesting. For some reason, I underlined that last night. I highlighted that. Sometimes I'm, I'm reading on, on my device as opposed to here, and I have to go back and um, put highlights in. So I got highlighted up to a certain point and then I'll go back, whatever, whatever. So, um, so we, we shared yesterday about the research around the cherry blossom scent. And mm -hmm. we talked about um, how that manifested for a few generations in the mice. 
And, um, and then we, you know, we talked about how we ended up yesterday where we said it behooves ancestors to inform their offspring that a particular environment was um, negative environment for them. So, I, you know, I don't know if a grandparent is going to sit back and say to you um, at a certain point, like, you know, we knew about the Great Depression, right? And we knew, you know, the narrative about what the Great Depression looked like. Mm -hmm. But does that then translate into, you know, your grandparents or somebody coming to you and sitting down? One of the things I remember my grand grandparents, because I asked uh, my grandmother, was she around during the Great Depression? And she was like, of course we were. And I said, well, how was that for you? And she said, well, if you ain't never had nothing. Thank you. They can't take nothing. It's not like anything. He, she was like. It wasn't any different than our every day. People were mm -hmm. jumping out of the out of the windows who felt like they couldn't go on because they didn't have anything. She was like, if you didn't start out with anything, it didn't affect you in the same way. Right. It's, it's the same with the economy. Oh, the economy is good. The economy is bad. My economy is what it is. It's, <laughs> it's not the contingent upon what people say it is. My right. economy is constant. It's right. mine. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> So the and Great so, Depression is like, oh, well, okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's not in comparison to, you know, because even with this pandemic, a lot of people yes. on the collective consciousness, they get on the news and they tell you about this and that and the other and how bad and people are suffering. Yes. And, and it's like, I always say, tell people the truth about what's going on in your life. You know, and if you're having an amazing time, don't sit there and try to just get on the bandwagon because everybody else is on that bandwagon. Say what is doing for you, right? And what is opened up and don't be a victim of it. That's yeah. Yeah. You know, well, me, that's a that's an energy that's us right now, the collective, the energy of of somebody's gotta be the good guy and somebody's gotta be the bad guy. Yeah. But, but, you know, for like, for me, I want to, I want to leave a space for who, but I started gardening. I, I got to eat stuff out of my garden. You know, I want to, I want to talk about what's different, not what's bad. Right. What, what has been better because there's always a better there is. Yeah. There is always a better, even if it's, I never set my body still. And now I know what it feels like to be still. I mm. haven't discovered that yet, but um, I have to be intentional to be still and go somewhere. But yeah, I, I think that what I wrote down here for this, be, it behooves our ancestors to inform our offsprings is that we don't have to recreate the experience. That's what I get, you know, because when my grandfather was on his early uh, stages of, of dementia, Alzheimer's, I don't know the difference between the two, but right. um, I remember, you know, telling him, thank you for allowing my mom to, you know, keep me here because um, she was 15 years old and that didn't have to be the choice. But, you know, of course, he corrected me like, what are you talking about? Like, we didn't have no other choice. Like that was you, you were ours. So that was beautiful. And I said, Granite, if you could do one thing different, like one thing different, like what would you do different? And I thought he would say, I would have been more consistent about learning to read or write. But I think what he said summed that up too. He said, I would have taken greater risk. He was like, you and Rob take have taken so many risks and it has afforded you an amazing lifestyle and I wish that I had taken more risk and that has spoke volumes to me a lot of times when it comes to connections to people jobs opportunities leaving progressive um because I hear my grandfather saying that yeah uh, that he wished that he had taken more risk. He was very steady, loyal, committed. And, you know, he just, he cre he was a very stable force in our, our family. And yeah. uh, I can see that. And, uh, and then I shared with him where areas where I felt like he took some risk, just knowing the stories that he's told me about South and coming North and not being able to read and write, working for almost 40 years, 
for four, not being able to read and write. You took a risk every day, mm-hmm. you know, and those white boys coming up there all educated and stuff and you still running the maintenance department. Come on, like what? You put the machines together without educate. That's a risk every day. He was like, yeah, and it took its toll on me because I was always worried about who's going to know, who's going to find out. And yeah. coming home was always a place of safety. I made it another day. That's why he retired so early because it was exhausting. But um, so I think that when we do share environments to with the, the generation behind us, I hope that the desire is to say, you don't have to recreate this experience. Mm. You can change your vibrational set point to, to have a different experience. Right. But you know what? Here's the thing that I find so beautiful about that, too. One of the things that we do is is sometimes I think that we have these, you know, we look down on people who um, haven't like like we got this perception that everybody needs to read and write. And if they don't read and write as if something is wrong with them or wrong with their family or wrong with their parents. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I want to say, you know what, in our community, first off, it was, it was illegal to read and write. And then even though we couldn't read and write, it didn't mean that we lacked intelligence. It means that we lacked a particular skill. And sometimes people can't distinguish or make the, determine the difference between the two. And so, yes, it's, it's wonderful if you can read and write, but it does not, it's not a, um, a indicator of intelligence or wisdom. Not mm-hmm. at all. Not even a little. Yeah. And first of all, I didn't even know until I was an adult that that was a reality because my grandfather was a magician underneath the hood of a vehicle. He was, we called him the auto doctor. And then the, he grew the best garden ever to me in the Lehigh's area. I know we got family in the village that had amazing gardens too, but I thought my grandfather had the best gardens in the whole entire world consistently every year in the prettiest yard. Um, so he had a lot, he, and he always pushed doing things with your hands, doing things with, with my sons. You know, he was like, you know, they have a gift with their hands, you know, ma- you know, make sure you master their hands. They can get their education, but make sure they master their gifts with their hands. Um, and so, yeah, I, I didn't even know that it was a reality until I was well into adulthood that that was a, that that was a thing for, um, for my grandfather. So I would have never known he built his home from the ground, everything. I just would have never guessed. So whatever prejudice that I may have had about that, it was definitely dispelled when I became an adult and learned different. Well, I, I still hear a lot of prejudice about it. And, um, and because I know that in my ancestral line that there were people who couldn't read or write, um, but it never, it never indicated to mm-hmm. me what intelligence is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, Ooh, I can't even imagine, like, there is something powerful about, uh, first off, I want to say that there is something powerful about not being educated. Because hmm. it's you. Be, yeah, and because I think that sometimes what we tend to do is put stuff into people that does that that disconnects them from the truth of life oh yeah yes doesn't allow them to see the connectedness of life i just read this morning's meditation was about how um how children know about a connectedness to god that at some point when they get in touch with religion, they unlearn because then they start learning about the rules of God, which is different from knowing about the connectedness. I love. Mm-hmm. Yes, that. So, um, and so sometimes it's in our thinking that we are putting something good in that really what we do is we put blocks up for people. 
So, um, so this idea of being able to go out and connect and listen and stand in a space where your knowing is not out of a book, but out of the experiential level of who you are, um, that is beautiful. So I, I'm, I'm, I refuse to be a part of that, the, the group of folks that want to, you know, poo-poo on that, you know? Yeah, I guess yeah. On that. So- yeah. um, Many experiences of, of it just being something different. Mm-hmm. So um, when they go through and they talk about this transgeneral, transgenerational epigenetic inheritance um, is a notion that behaviors can pass from one generation to another. Mm -hmm. Um, and he says when I when he works with families in his practice, he often sees reoccurring patterns of illness, mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, relationship struggles, and financial hardships. And he says, and when he sees that, he's always compelled to look deeper. Mm -hmm. And I do stuff like that and people are like, oh, everything was fine. Oh, that was good. How was your oh, they were good. They had a great relationship. Oh, okay. So tell me, the information that you learn from your parents and their relationship and how do you utilize it in, in your relationship and what parts of it do you think isn't working for you in your relationship? And then you get to hear some truths mm. or you go back three generations and a woman looks and every man that her great grandmama had, her grandmama had, and now her mama have died of heart attacks. Mm. Right? <laughs> you know what? It's so funny because I, I gotta tell you this. It's so funny because my dad went back. My dad used to date this woman. I ain't gonna say her name because she's still alive. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. Wow. He was a sweetie pie, right? But I said to my dad one time, I said, she done buried three husbands. I was like, <laughs> watch yourself. And he went back and said something to her about me saying that. <laughs> and, and I was just like saying, you know what? I said, she about to bury you too. And in fact, <laughs> in fact, she did, but she wasn't his wife, but she did. And, um, you know, cause he was always like, you know, like singing her praises and all of this stuff. I was like, but ooh, dude, you, so, but that's kind of the, 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 I, so, so, the, so part of me, Stephanie hates that that we get, you know, that the stuff is in our minds that says bad past behavior indicates future. It definitely can though. Stop, right? Yeah. yeah. Unless you stop the train and be like, I'll take everything out of this cart and I'll put in this cart what I want in here. But if you don't do that, it's in there like so Prego. So did I tell you, I had lunch um, a couple of months ago with an ex of mine. So uh -huh, you did mention when it. it. Mm -hmm. and, and when I said that, oh, I broke up with him, he was like, mm, that figures. <laughs> like, like, yeah, you can't help yourself saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sam will take her marbles and go home. I mean, he's just sitting up there looking at me like, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 yes. So, <laughs> heal me, Lord, if that's what I need. <laughs> if that's what you want, it's your call. It's your call. <laughs> but, yes. oh my goodness, but it's, but it's something to pay attention to, though. And, yeah, and I yes. think that I think coming to 
reality, when we get connected with people, coming to reality really helps us understand why individuals, jobs or whatever showed up in us, either to repeat the pattern or to break the pattern, to, to cut it off and redefine the flow. But if we're not paying attention and we just, everybody doing the same thing that they've always done, then you get the same, re, you get the same result. You, you, for me, I'm always asking, why does this show up in my life? What, why is this here? Why did this show up in my life? Where have I seen this before? And if I haven't seen it, where have I felt this vibrational energy before? Where have I felt this? And if I've never felt it, then, you know, why is this showing up for me? And paying attention, but the paying attention is important mm -hmm. because there is a shift going on in the atmosphere. And if we pay attention, we get to enjoy this ride of mm -hmm. change and transformation. Yeah. So, so like, so like for me, as even as I like sitting with that, that thing, I can say that there has been a part of me that has taken some level of pride in um, being able to say when something is not working for me and walking away from it, right? Um, and to be honest about that, sometimes I, I probably should, I probably have stayed too long. Mm -hmm. And in other cases, I probably made my move too soon, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. but, but there has been a part of me that has had some kind of value in that. So I don't know, I guess, I guess maybe, you know, it's right in just saying that, yeah, that, you know, just being, being conscious of what, yeah, what's, what's in this for me? What, what am I supposed to do with this, right? Not trying to justify my actions after they've passed, but in the moment, because, you know, some... Um, I had a phone call yesterday. I'm, I'm, I'm going to digress for a second here. I had a phone call yesterday from, um, uh, from somebody that I was in an organization with. And, um, and he thanked me for something that um, at a certain point, I felt like I needed to pull his coattail and say to him something about you know, what he was doing, how he was maneuvering, blah, blah, blah. And then, I, but when I was in this space, I had, I had made up in my mind that somebody needed to be the one that had this conversation with him. And I decided it was going to be me because I didn't think anybody else was going to do it. So when I, the, when I sat down to have the conversation with him, Stephanie, it was as if um, in the midst of it, my mouth went dry as I was starting to talk, my mouth went dry. My head got, I, I started getting spacey. And I was immediately like, okay, this is not for me to do. And I felt like I was trying to moonwalk out of it. I started the conversation. I started in on it. And then I started trying to moonwalk back out of it. So, you know, we kind of had the, the, the conversation and, um, and I was basically, but, but in the midst of it, I was like, okay, this is not mine to do, or this is not my place. So as I'm back out of it, um, I left it there and went on, you know, we went on and um, it didn't necessarily seem like it impacted my relationship with him, but you know, how could it not, right? So here it is um, two, two to three years later. And he said to me yesterday in the phone call, he says, I want to thank you for what you said to me. He says, because it never dawned on me that I could be hurting as opposed uh, or a hindrance as opposed to 
it going, you know, he was like, I could only see from my perspective and I didn't see all of the other ones. And so he thanked me for that. And I was like thinking to myself, I said, you know what? I said, in the midst of that, I felt like I was out of place. <laughs> and I told him about how torn I was with it. But when I walked away, I walked away, um, I walked away feeling clean as if, okay, I said the piece and then I needed to 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 back out of it, not yeah. make it like it was going And maybe to you said just enough where before maybe you would have been more detailed and flowery and and for instance and but because you weren't all you were able just to give enough like being led by spirit that needed to convey the message just enough just a little mm -hmm. bit of salt you know and, and so and, and what I what I what I realized was is because I could I mean I could tell you all the bodily sensations that was going on inside of me as I was going through that, the, the woozy dizziness in my head, the mouth getting dry, the what I felt in my stomach. I was just really, really in tuned with the way that it was showing up in my spirit. And I was like sitting there saying, okay, I realize I need to back up. Because mm -hmm. none of that was saying to me, go forward. It was mm -hmm. saying back up. Mm -hmm. And so I just wonder sometimes how often people get stuck in override, <laughs> you know, we override what it is that, because if, if we look at it and, and sticking our finger in our, in our navel and saying, this is the center of the universe. If I pay attention to what my stomach is saying to me in the midst of, of what I'm doing, will it, will it enable me to avoid a lot of stuff that I, you know, that I should? I or say not. try it and practice it. It's, it's magical. Not, I, I, I do my yoni because, you know, I learned a couple of years ago that there is a messenger there that gives me the attaboy every time. It's consistent. It's not, mm -hmm. hasn't failed. It's just practicing. We can practice that. We can practice our bodily awarenesses. And that's what, to me, sets an educated, not educated person apart from each other is that the one that has not been given all of the worldly concepts or perceptions deals with the earth, deals with the self, deals with the body, gets notions, can can understand the 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 um the little hairs in the back of the neck, or, yeah, and things like that. Where yeah, yeah, where you get so much information that you're not sure. You know, can I trust my gut? Can I trust my feelings? Can I trust? I'm, mm -hmm. I feel like I have been a, a um, I've gone through that journey of so much on awareness of human behavior that I'm just like, eh, no, this looks too much like that. And it may yeah. not even be that, you know, but I'll do that and miss out on a opportunity to grow or know something different because I'm like, oh, mm -mm. I know what that is. That's classic textbook. So what? What does that mean? I've been trained for this. I've been yeah. trained to deal with textbook people, right? But I'll yeah. be like, <laughs> I'm good. You yeah. Know? But and and that's one of the things that you know one of the things that I will say that I honor in myself is is just trying to what I feel not disregarding it and um and and honoring that so yeah yeah however it however we learn it that we learn it is the is the, the important key. part yeah. yeah yeah so um it looks like um it is yeah it's time to go and mm -hmm. uh, yeah i think that you know mm, and we talked about i think are, are we finished with this page can we um, uh, yeah i think that when unexplored events good. yeah when unexplored events in a previous generation drives the behavior of the man who loses all his money at the racetrack or the woman who chooses to be intimate 
only with married men. What unexplored events in previous generations drive the drives the behavior? Yeah. So I'll have their influence. So, like when you have repeated family members of men that, you know, infidelity. Granddaddy did it. Uncles did it. Da, 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 da. And the same with drinking. The same with you know, a uh, uh, certain types of abandonment. Like all those play a, a giant role um, mm -hmm. in what we do right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like little mice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So so and and even domestic violence or. Yep you know, all of that stuff, like, you know, when we see these reoccurring patterns, look deeper. That's even in yourself, right? Even if you're not sitting in front of a therapist, mm -hmm. you know, what, what different decisions don't, don't just say, oh, my mama was an alcoholic or my daddy smoked or, you know, like you got it natural. Ask yourself questions about it. And does that have to be your truth, right? Because I had never seen domestic violence in my family from nobody, not didn't know what it was, never seen it. And mm -hmm. then I got into a relationship and later on find out that my grandmother's first husband mm. was an abuser. But I didn't find out until I married my first husband. And it was like, I didn't know what I know this now, you know, but I was just like, whoa, like, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, yeah, so it, it is powerful. It is something that nothing on our journey is just happening to us. Yes, yes. Nothing is just happening. Get curious, y'all. Get curious. Remain curious. Get curious. Yes. Get curious. I know that's a curious. That's a, <laughs> <laughs> but it's perfect. That's okay. Yes, let's be curious, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> All right. So same thank you curious. so much. Thank yes, you. Same thank here. You. Have a All terrific right. Tuesday. Yes, terrific Tuesday. And um, I will see you tomorrow. Yes, see you Wednesday. Yeah, in, 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 in All right, bye bye. Right. See ya. All right, you guys, we are out of here for today. I thank you so much for your attention, your time, your love, all of that stuff. It is wonderful. Um, as you know, as you probably have heard, we will be here tomorrow, seven thirty ish. But Stephanie will not be with me next week because she is headed out of town. And um, so I'll be solo next week. So anyway, um, I am hoping that you have an amazing day. And um, we are talking out of this book. I'd be remiss if I didn't say it. It didn't start with you by Mark Wolin. And uh, if you are interested in it, all reading this book along with us, get it, right? Get it, get it, get it. And if you're not, that's cool too. Um, hopefully we are going through this, meandering our way through this with a fine tooth comb so that you can get the juice that is meant for you. So um, I bless you and I wish you a amazing, uh, I'm sorry, a terrific Tuesday. All right.